Hi there, and in this video, we're going to walk through a mini chat flow that collects a number of different pieces of details. Now, this video is part of the instructions on how to install and set up our landing page killer template, which if you haven't downloaded it yet, you can download it for free. In the link is in the comments below this video, and we'll show you how to install and set up and collect a number of different pieces of information from your users to be able to create more qualified leads for your business. Okay, let's get into it. So this is the flow uh, that collects all of the different pieces of information, um, those email, phone number, subscription, and the T's and C's. I'm just gonna run through each different section to be able to give you some context and understand why we set it up the way we do um, and how you can update and change these bits as we go. Okay, so starting from the start, one of the things that we like to do when someone enters a flow for the first time, particularly a flow where we're collecting some pieces of information, is we like to check um, if we have recorded where they actually opted into our chatbot for the very first time. So um, this helps us uh, track uh, different entry points for our own chatbot and also our client's chatbot. So we check this field here, which is called source. This is basically the entry source. Um, and we check if that exists yet or not. If it doesn't, then we add uh, an action item in there to be able to update that custom field to say that the source they've entered from is this flow, the lead gen flow here. Now we've got two variations of how you can display this information. It's likely that in another flow you will have spoken about, um, you know, give us your details or opt in to um, receive whatever it is that you're offering, um, potentially in a different flow. Um, so we put this more detailed um, information here around, and we've kept it quite generic for you. So you can change the image, you know, thanks for interest in our offer. You can obviously give more detail and context around that. Um, uh, to claim it, tap the button below, and we keep that as um, a uh, quick reply. So then, and we also add on here, um, you'll notice that we make sure that we force them to be able to actually select that. Um, so then if they do type anything or do anything other than selecting that button, it forces them and says, tap the option below to continue. You'll also notice in all of our bits that we collect the information or we're trying to get someone to do, that we do have a delay on there if the contact hasn't engaged. So you'll see up here, we've said if the contact hasn't engaged, if they haven't hit that button in one hour time, we've toggled that on. And then it just sends um, another similar message again. Don't forget to tap the button to continue. And then it comes up here. And what we like to do is we just give some people context around what's going to happen in this flow. So we're just going to collect some more information. Sometimes we also like to say, this will only take 15 to 30 seconds, just to give some people some idea and they don't opt out halfway through and drop out. Now, the next condition that we add is um, checking the first name of the user. Now, the reason why we do this is, um, particularly if you're wanting to send this information over to your email system or your CRM system and sync it with that, um, often we need a first name in there, so also you can personalize those emails in the merge fields and stuff like that in there. Um, now, there are a couple of variations. Sometimes if uh, people are chatting with us in the live chat, uh, option on our website, um, they can optionally choose whether to log into Messenger or they can still chat as a guest. And so uh, their name, if we weren't to update it, would be um, saved as guest 1234, for instance. So if their name is that, um, and you'll also notice the same condition in the Instagram flows, where sometimes people have different types of accounts where they don't have their first name set, um, that we get them to type their first name in here as well. So these um, options there are just collecting their first name. Then it goes through to uh, the next step um, and we go into, and if they already do have their email, um, it skips over to be able to collect their email address. Now, again, we had a condition in each of these steps when we're collecting pieces of information because we don't wanna ask for something again and get them to type something out again if we've already got it. So we check uh, if we've already got their email, if it is, we display it in a nice message and get them to confirm it if it is or, it is or not. Um, if it isn't, um, then we come down there, down here, and again, we get them to type their email address out. You'll notice that the reply type um, is set to email. We save it to a system field, set an, um, the email opt in if you're using ManyChat's email. And then again, the same, we have a engagement or non-engagement expiry. Um, usually for fields like this, we limit it down to about 15 minutes. Uh, and then we put the same thing down here to be able to give them a little bump to come back and complete that step again. Now, throughout the flows, one of the best practice things that we do whenever we're collecting key pieces of information that we wanna be able to track for reporting, um, to be able to go back and see which um, contacts have done this, 
is uh, we like to add a tag to people that have um, entered their email address in here. We also like to log uh, conversion events around key things that happen throughout our chatbot. So the conversion event um, we're logging here is that we've collected an email address. Um, this can be handy for, again, all your reporting to be able to trigger automated rules and just be able to check and monitor how your chatbot is going through many chats inside as well. Now, uh, the next step in this one is uh, optionally getting them to opt in to a subscription list. So this is a Messenger or Instagram subscriber list where they can opt into a particular topic around a certain frequency. And then you can um, message them on an ongoing basis based on that frequency after they have opted in. So what we like to do down here in these messages, we like to give people a little bit of context as to why we're asking them to hit the get messages button because it can be quite new to people. So um, we ask them to hit the get messages button. We also uh, describe it by saying it's free to subscribe and they can opt out anytime because this is one of the key points where people may opt out and they um, don't want to opt into what looks like um, an ongoing subscription list that they're going to receive potential spam messages from you. Of course, we know that you don't do that. So that's why we add that little bit in there. Now you will need to change your um, the uh, notification topic in here. If you haven't set one up yet, um, it will uh, allow you to do so. There'll be this field will be blank and you'll be able to create a new one. The only things that you can change are the headline here. Um, you can't change the get messages um, title down here. Um, you can see it's grayed out, it's Facebook rules. Uh, so that's why we say hit the get messages button. Um, so this is an important step to be able to get right because you will see um, it, of all the steps throughout these flows, that will be one of the higher drop off rates there. Now, one of the things that we um, also add to these flows to be able to encourage people to opt in is um, we add a delay. Now we've added um, similar to how we do a non-engagement delay. We add a delay for, you can change it from an hour to 15 minutes or six hours, whatever you would like. And then we just run another condition down here to check that um, they haven't opted in yet. If they um, have opted in, it does nothing, right? We assume that they've gone through when they've chosen opt in. If they haven't, we just send this quick message that just says, don't forget to complete the last step, hit the get messages button above to continue. Now, important point with this is that Facebook's rules only let you send um, or offer someone to opt into a particular topic once per week. So if you were to sit, uh, take this message and duplicate it and then add it in down here to remind them and you're asking them to opt in again, um, you will get a warning from Facebook. So that's why we just change this wording just to say tap the get messages button above because it will still be there most likely unless they've typed and had a conversation with you, but it will still be there in their conversation history where they can go back and select it. Um, now, again, we track what they have or haven't done through our reporting and tags in here with conversion events. And then the next step optionally, um, and you can structure this however you would like, um, depending on how much information you need to gather and whether the phone number is important um, to your business, keep in mind that the more information you ask for, the higher the drop-off rates. So um, we do ask, would you like to add um, your phone number to receive any future offers? Or you could phrase it differently, to receive a call from our team, um, to opt into SMS updates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if they say no, uh, then they continue and they skip past this. If they say yes, then again, we check whether or not we've already got their phone number, get them to confirm if that's still the right one. Otherwise we collect it, add the tags and conversion um, events in there. And then we continue to the T's and C's. Um, again, when we're collecting these details, the reply type we set as phone and we save it to a system field to be able to track that properly as well. Now, the last step, and again, is optional, similar to the phone number one, is um, that if you would like to uh, make sure that people, you know, from a transparency perspective, are opting in based on your um, T's and C's or privacy policy, this is a good opportunity just to give them the opportunity um, to opt in or opt out, uh, giving them multiple opportunities. Now, what we say here is, um, you know, you can phrase this differently by clicking I agree, you confirm um, you have agreed to the privacy policy outline and you can put the link in the copy there as well. Or if you want to put a button over to your website, you can also do that. Um, it's totally up to you and uh, how you want to um, phrase that or if you still want that in there as well. Now, the last step um, that we'd like uh, to add are a couple of things. So one, we add a tag to um, say that they've completed it. 
right? That they've gone through all of the steps, whether you've got your phone number, whether they've um, opted into the privacy policy, regardless of um, how much piece of information, this tag is always there to say that someone has actually completed it. So then you can see how many people have got to the end from that as well. Now, the last um, little bit we do, which again is optional, we have a, um, a bot field, um, which is a centralized um, field for your chatbot um, that isn't user specific, it's just specific to the chatbot. And we increase the amount of, or we use that to be able to um, occasionally monitor how many emails a chatbot has collected. Um, and then we increase that by one, knowing that we've got an email throughout this flow at some time as well. Um, we also collect uh, another conversion event to say there's been a lead generated and they've gone through those steps. And then if you'd like, um, we also have uh, the ability to save the, the data from um, this flow that the contact has entered into a Google sheet. So then and we kind of have that as a fail safe. So if the uh, if you are syncing it with other third party platforms like a CRM, um, like an email system, if that breaks or that doesn't work, can use a Google Sheet as a bit of a backup. It's also handy for sales teams or people to be able to check and monitor um, and record and maybe update those records in the Google Sheet as well and using that. Now, if you're not sure how to be able to sync this um, into a Google Sheet, um, there's another video that we've got in the documentation that runs you through how to use ManyChat and Google Sheet in more details. And then lastly is just a nice uh, confirmation message. Now, we recommend um, you know, using a nice big bright image, obviously saying thank you. Um, you can have a direct link to um, you know, your website, to another area in your chatbot. Um, this last message is a really great opportunity to be able to give the information that they need right now or that they're looking for, or to be able to capitalize on their attention. Um, because we found that most users, by the time they've gone through and opted in and they received what they were looking for, they're 60% more likely to actually convert. So if you can put more information here, and be able to get them to take action then, it's more likely that it's going to be better for your business. So use this last section wisely to update it how you would like.